I'm Keith Olbermann, and this is The Resistance. Do you think Donald Trump realizes that the American intelligence community has already started to kill and eat his presidency? The leaks, the drip, 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 the tiny revelation that cost Michael Flynn the National Security Advisor's job, the slightly larger revelation that was the play-by-play -play of how and why his first three choices to succeed Flynn didn't succeed Flynn, the larger revelations that put the backbone in the New York Times and CNN stories about the Trump campaign talking with Russia while still hiding the potentially disastrous details of exactly what they said, and the far more meaningful revelation, but the far more subtle revelation, that the so-called British dossier is gaining credibility within the intelligence agencies because they have been able to confirm so many little details, like how the claims of meetings and phone calls on specific dates are turning out to be exactly right. You think Trump understands what all these things are? They are warnings. They are the cop letting the belligerent drunk see just the tip of the gun. They are the poker player putting down the $20 chips, then smiling at the mark, then pulling back the $20 chips and replacing them with $100 chips. They are warnings. Stories based on sources usually bear no resemblance to what you see in the movies or on television dramas. It's not all, all the president's men with indefatigable and annoying pests, overwhelming reluctant individuals until the latter do the right thing. I mean, you might have enough sources who are around the center, but not at the center of a given story. And with all the circumstantial evidence they have provided you, you might once in a while be able to persuade that key reluctant source to confirm what you have already proved to them that you actually know. But this is almost always true. A source does not give you a story because you want them to give it to you. A source gives you a story because they want to give it to you. And there are sources a lot of sources, a lot of very well-placed, very well-informed sources who want to tell the world about Donald Trump. The details they are doling out have a dual purpose. They get these stories out that confirm the correct perception that this administration is like a giant fire hose that the firefighters have lost control of. But more importantly, they are there to get the message to Trump and those around him that there is an iceberg and it will be revealed one square foot at a time, so stop screwing around. Maybe he's not smart enough to get it. Maybe he's not sane enough to get it. Maybe he's not experienced enough to get it. That individuals sitting on details potent enough to pick off his national security advisor hours after Kellyanne Kahn job said he had Trump's full confidence, they're also clearly sitting on a horde of far more embarrassing, far more destructive, far more lurid details about Trump. So why aren't those lurid details known already? Well, this part is entirely speculative, of course, but the way leaking in the intelligence community, or as they sometimes phrase it, story placement, was explained to me, it is supposed to be done with the minimum expenditure of assets. In other words, to go back to that analogy of the poker player pulling back the $20 chips and replacing them with $100 chips, you want to use as little of your stash as possible. Each chip, each story you confirm or promulgate involves something you then can no longer use for its original purpose. The essence of intelligence is secrecy. Reveal a secret to a reporter, and you may reveal within the worldwide intelligence community a thousand details of how you learned that secret. Why spend the $100 chips when you might get the job done with the 20s? And it's clear that the Oliver Stone version of the intelligence community is at best an exaggeration. Trump derided the IC, as it calls itself, during the campaign, insulted the IC after the election, impugned the IC during the transition, and yet, for the most part, the spies kept quiet. Whatever they thought of Trump, with their great restraint and to their great credit, they clearly wanted to grin and bear through a Trump administration. And then it became clear he wasn't going to stop. But what pushed them over the edge? Again, just a guess. But I suspect that speech at CIA headquarters with Trump's disingenuous, shallow, fawning over them while he brought his own employees along to applaud him, that was certainly the end of the beginning as far as the intelligence community's forbearance. And then came his noted disinterest in their products, their briefings. And finally came the night he took in the details of the North Korean missile test while the gawking patrons at Nightmare Alago 
the Judge Smales and the Dr. Beeper and the Haverkamps and the Mrs. Crane of Trump's real-life enactment of the movie Caddyshack while they all took cell phone pictures. And the next thing you knew, the Wall Street Journal had a story about how U.S. intelligence agencies are not telling Trump everything for fear it, quote, could be leaked or compromised. And then CBS News had a story about Trump yelling about that story at his CIA director. And then Huffington Post had a story about how the president only wants bullet points in his intel briefings and how he really likes maps. And Newsweek had a story about one Western European ally intercepting the Flynn phone calls with supposedly the Russian ambassador. And Politico had a story about a senior National Security Council official criticizing Trump and his team and getting fired for it. And the New York Times just happened to hear about a military conference where the general in charge of U.S. Special Operations Command suddenly blurts out, our government continues to be in unbelievable turmoil and later clarifies to the reporter, quote, as a commander, I'm concerned our government be as stable as possible, remarks that seemed about as subtle as saying, golly, as service members who love and honor the Constitution, we would hate to have to do a military takeover of the government, but bullshit McGee over here is a whack job. And none of it registers with Trump. On he goes, threatening the leakers, the leakers he compared once to Nazi Germany, the leakers who have all the chips, the 20s, the hundreds, for all we know, the millions. On he goes, tweets this a week ago. Information is being illegally given to the failing New York Times and Washington Post by the intelligence community, NSA and FBI, just like Russia. The real scandal here is that classified information is illegally given out by intelligence like candy, very un-American. Un-American, just like Russia, Nazi Germany. Whereupon somebody asks John Schindler, a former NSA guy who left his job at the Naval War College under embarrassing circumstances, but whose tweets about Trump and the intelligence community have been remarkably prescient, quote, what do you think is going on inside NATSEC right now, national security, after Trump's intelligence tweet this morning? And Schindler tweets back, now we go nuclear. I see, intelligence community, war going to new levels, just got an EM from senior IC friend. It began, quote, he will die in jail. Do you think Donald Trump realizes that the American intelligence community has already started to kill and eat his presidency? Resist. Peace.